Hi there, it's Joe Clark, and welcome back to my Cisco Modeling Labs video series. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, um, but we just came out with an exciting new release, CML version 2.6, and it's got some cool features that I'd like to walk you through, show you them, um, and, and get you a little uh, incentivized or excited to use, uh, to use CML. If you have never used CML, some of these things I hope you're going to say, wow, that's just how I expect it to work. Uh, and for those of you who have been following us for a while uh, and keeping up to date with the versions, you're still going to notice some things that uh, we think you will think are cool um, and look completely different to what you're used to, even if you came from the last release, uh, CML 2.5. So here's my server. Um, I upgraded from 2.5, and one of the things you'll you'll notice right away uh, when you upgrade, first time you log in, is this banner, uh, Plan System Maintenance, and only administrative users or admin users can log in. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as admin, and when I get in, not only do I still see the banner, uh, but you'll note that uh, it says my CPU, memory, disk, offline, and I've got the system health issue. Uh, this is not a cluster, this is just a standalone CML instance, um, but a cluster would look the same way. You'll, you'll note that my one compute node, the controller itself, it's registered, but everything is unknown. All of the, the, the other uh, process statuses are unknown. So what do I do? How do I get CML working? This is all documented, but uh, it even tripped us up uh, as, I, as I was getting ready to do this video. Why, why am I seeing this? The banner was, was kind of obvious, but the other thing I, I think you'll find this just quite useful. So first thing, you see this right when you do the upgrade. Go into Tools, System Administration. First thing you'll see is System Maintenance. This is a new thing. Uh, you just disable it. Click the toggle there, click Save. The banner immediately goes away. But you notice, hmm, still got that system health issue. The next thing you need to do is go to Compute Host. And again, even if this is not a cluster, even if this is standalone, go to Compute Host. Uh, in a standalone, you'll just see the one compute. Click the checkbox next to it and change its admission state from registered to ready. Change that to ready. Um, this, you don't have to click save or anything. This red X will go uh, fairly quickly to a green check mark. You see that? And you see that the CPU, memory, and disk have now started to fill in. This, in a few seconds or so, will go to OK. Now, if this were a cluster, there would be multiple compute nodes here, and you would want to repeat this process for all of them that you expect to be healthy, that are upgraded already, and are ready to serve nodes. You can see that it has now gone to OK. So we are ready to continue our walkthrough. The dashboard, not much has changed. Uh, but before I jump into the lab I've already got on, let me add a new lab just so we can look at a clean canvas and see what that's like. First thing you'll notice is it's welcoming me to CML and offering me this walkthrough tour. So if you walk away from the video and you forgot some of these things, the tour is going to touch on a few of those elements. If I click Next and you can see there's a new way of adding nodes shows you that. Click next again. Talks about the, the way you can drag nodes out of there. Um, that still works. We'll look at another thing around this bulk mode in a second. And then there's this new nodes pane. Uh, and this is a really cool new feature to CML 2.6 that we'll spend some time on. When you're done, you click exit. This goes away and it won't be shown to you again. It will only be shown the first time uh, to a user who's logs in. So if you log in as a new user, you see it again, um, but you won't see it uh, if, you, if you've already seen it once. So this is a clean canvas. And as I mentioned, there are a few things of interest, one of which is there's a new way of adding nodes. If you've come from a previous version, you may remember the, the slider out here, the nodes pane, that doesn't exist anymore. Instead, you would click on this, and you still have this uh, ability to drag. Uh, when you drag, it'll disappear temporarily until you drop it, and then the, the, the little window will come back. So that's the old or the current way of doing the drag and drop, the mouse way of doing it. We also added an accessibility feature to 2.6 where you can do a bulk uh, add. This doesn't require the mouse, um, but even if you don't need the accessibility feature, this can be a nice convenience feature anyway. So let's say I wanted to create a bunch of routers prefixed with the letter R. I wanted to create iOS V and 10 of them. So if you're like setting up for uh, to prep for CCNA or CCNP, you might do that. You notice when you, you look at a lot of those study guides, that's how they work. It's 
R and then a number or SW and a number, we well, can do that. I set my node definition type, number I want to add. I can mess with the X and the Y coordinates and the offsets if I want, but I'll leave those the default. I'll click add and you can see it creates 10 instances of uh, routers for me, 10 iOS V instances starting at zero, going up to nine, um, and all prefixed with the R, whatever I want. I could have router, I could have RTR, any of that prefix. And then it's just a quick way of adding those nodes to the canvas. Um, again, don't have to use a mouse for that. So that's some of the, the new things to show in a blank canvas. Let's now step into a lab that's already running, my typical demo lab. Um, and if you've not come from CML25, if you've come from a previous release, you've never used CML before, you'll know a little bit more color to this particular lab. CML25 introduced what we call annotations, which allows you to draw things like rectangles, ellipses, and add text to your lab topologies. So I have two kind of sub-networks here. I've got a dual stack IPv4, IPv6 network, and I've got an IPv6 only part of the network. And I can mark those up and, and, and add text to, to indicate what network is which. Those are, again, not new to 2.6, but new to 2.5. And if I need to, I can temporarily hide annotations. I can temporarily hide link names. I can clean the topology up a little bit if I were doing some, some screenshots and I wanted to do that. So, so those are some nice features in interacting with, with the lab topology. But what I really wanted to show you here is this new feature we call panes. The one thing you noticed is that there isn't any bottom pane anymore. And if you're using CML previously, you might miss that. Where did that go? Um, the other thing, if you've been used to CML, and this was new to 2.5, there's no more halo. There's no more hover menu. Instead, you right click on a node and you can get access to some of the uh, elements or some of the, the options that you need. And you can do the same thing with a link. Right click on a link and you'll see some options there. But panes is a really cool feature. So if I click pane, by default, it would look something like this. I would have nothing. It would be a blank, kind of a, a blank canvas or, or pane stretching across the entire screen. But I want to add something to it. So the first thing I'll do is I'll right click on my router to here. And I'll select console, I open the console, and I have a console connectivity. And you can see it takes up the entire width of the pane. That's a terribly interesting. But let's say I wanted to add another pane. I wanted to split this big pane into two smaller ones. And so I did that. Now I have this other blank area over here. I still have my console here, but what might I want to do here? Well, if I click on this, this other blank pane, and I'll right click on this uh, interface, this link, and I'll select packet capture. So now I've got the router console over here, a packet capture over here, I can go ahead and start that packet capture and then do something like ping Google, which goes out my external connector, and I can look at that traffic in real time. The ICMP v6 packets, I can look at that in real time while I'm right here in my console. So I don't have to keep jumping back and forth between different, different panes. I, I can have everything I need right where I want it. And let's say I, you know, I, I'm okay with jumping back and forth. I can drag this, the tab for this particular pane over to here, and now I combine them and I've got another pane. I can say now I want to put in a, another console over here. And so now I've got the branch router and this, I got the, the packet capture and the other console over here. And I can do things like if I needed to do a parallel debugging between two nodes, if I was like debugging OSPF or debugging a BGP or some uh, peer type HSRP, some peer type protocol, I can do that and look at them both at the same time and watch them uh, live, line by line as they go. So Pane's a really cool new feature uh, to CML, and you can get as many more as you want. You can split these in any way, or you can be done with them and start removing uh, panes that you don't need and get back to the, the full screen if you want. Um, so great new feature here in uh, CML 2.6. The other thing, speaking of external connectivity that I really like, so if you were using 2.5, you may have seen this uh, in cockpit. Uh, I got to spell sysadmin right. You may have seen this feature over in cockpit where it says bridge protection. 
one thing that, that people, including myself, have done um, is they connect a, a layer two device uh, to a bridge external connector and the BPDUs just melt down the physical network. Now, it shouldn't have to happen. So we added this feature where you can only allow, you can enable bridge protection and it only allows IP-like traffic, or IPv4, IPv6. That was done just at the default bridge level. In CML26, however, you can go to tool system administration, external connectors, and you can do that. You can turn protection on or off for any of the bridges, including custom bridges, uh, like I have the VLAN 20 bridge uh, in my network, you can turn them on or off based on what you want. So if you absolutely know what you're doing and you want to allow those other layer two frames out, you can do that. The other thing you can control on a per bridge level is whether or not that bridge is snooped. And what snooping means is there's a process running in the background that looks at ARPs and DHCP um, packets and says, ah, these are the external addresses that this node is learning, and you can query that with the API. And other things like CML utils, the command line uh, tool set, that also can, can show you those IP addresses for being able to come in and access CML. So that's just a quick walkthrough of some of the new 2.6 features. I didn't get to two things, and we're going to have uh, other videos coming that go in a little bit deeper around the uh, new uh, Amazon Web Services support. So now in CML 2.6, if you have an AWS account, you can install CML into their bare metal as a service on, on the AWS side, and that is a supported configuration. The other thing Again, speaking of external connector, uh, there's a tool called PATI, which is a, a play on PAT or port address translation. Uh, it's disabled by default, but it will allow you to punch holes, port holes, into a NAT external connector. If you don't have the ability of creating bridges, because maybe you don't have a lot of other IP addresses you can use, and you need to use the NAT or the Layer 3 external connector, uh, you can still access your remote nodes by doing port redirection uh, and come in through that, that NAT gateway that CML uh, is providing. And Patty will let you adjust that mapping. So look for those videos. Uh, look for those, those deeper dives and, and more uh, advanced uh, uh, things that you can do with some of the features like panes. Those are coming. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy getting to know CML and enjoy getting to know CML 2.6. Thanks.